Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you something interesting on FPV. It's called the 3D FPV camera. I ordered it online and it came from Russia. Out of the box, it looks like this. The two halves are separatable, so you could separate them apart. They are joined together via pins here and the pins at the bottom. To improve the stereoscopic view, I extended the distance. These are actually legs of resistors. So just cut the legs off some resistors and then you could use those legs to join the pins together. One end of the legs goes into the parts here. So I insert the legs into the part over here. And the other ends get soldered to the copper pins. The objective of not having the distance too wide is because I want to fit it into the standard GoPro case. Some time ago I got this case for my Morbius camera. It's a conversion case as you can see, it converts a Morbius camera to look like a GoPro so that you could mount it on a standard GoPro gimbal. So I get the same case for this 3D camera and by the way the name of this 3D camera is called the Blackbird. You could Google online or you could see the thread of it in RC Group's forum. On the scale it weighs 42.4 grams with the conversion case. So 42.4 grams is pretty light. Most gimbal will work with the standard weight of a GoPro which would be at least 60 grams. So what I've done is I added weights. These are lead weights. Each one is 5 grams. So I have 4 of them and that increase the weight by 20 grams. And there you have it, 58.6 grams. which should work fine on most gimbal. This is my FPV quadcopter. This is the Morbius camera. If I want to do 3D FPV, I could Swap that out. Put in this one. To use the Blackbird camera, you need to find yourself a pair of goggles which support view sequential 3D format. View sequential 3D format is a popular format used in movies and DVD players, etc. And the goggles I found here is the Hit Play. The Hit Play goggles support view sequential, so I could use it with the Blackbird 3D camera. The other option will be the EVG920R. The popular goggles out there is used by Ivy Crazy and a lot of other people. And not necessarily for 3D. Okay, now let me show you some features of the Hate Play. Hate Play goggles comes with a unit called a Liberator. The Liberator supports other forms of input. As you can see here, you have the VGA and the USB stick. But to use the composite, you need to use the S-Video plug, which they provide. The S-Video plug goes in here, and then you can plug in your standard video signal from your, from your video receiver. I found this cable rather bulky, so I basically use a cable which I cut off from a USB mouse. So, and then I run the cable alongside the main cable all the way to the goggles. The ends are not fixed yet. I'm going to connect the ends here to a micro VRX module so that I can stick the micro receiver on top of the goggles and then have the antenna up here by the fact chart and other standard FPV goggles. I also have the DVR recorder which I will stick here and I splice the video signal so that I could plug it in for recording. I also splice the power 
是来克 supply power， 这个 DVR 来搞的。So basically, that's my hip play in a nutshell. It's not ready yet till I have the micro VRX module. At this point of time, I'm using a pigtail to hook this up to an external VRX. There's some feedbacks about these goggles which aren't that good. One of them is 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 that it doesn't display snow. So you want the goggles to display snow so that when the video signal gets really weak, you want to be able to still catch a glimpse of the video. I'm going to run the test now to see how well it displays the snow. There you have it. The hip play goggles does display snow and static. If I try to make the signal weaker like this, Okay, it freezes, and there's a message that says input signal not detected. Do you have to reboot? No, you don't have to. When the signal recovers, the video comes back. Once again, the freeze, and the signal is too weak. And video comes back again. In my opinion, I think this is not too bad. I mean, you don't want to fly out too far and have a video that's really bad and not enjoyable anymore. Okay, that's the snow test on the hip play goggles with no antenna on my video receiver. Okay, the next test is to test the PAL camera on the hip play goggles. This 3D camera, the Blackbird, is NTSC, and it has no issue with the head play. On the forums, people are complaining of the PAL camera having a slow frame rate of five frames per second on the head play goggles. So I'm going to swap out this camera. Make sure the polarity is right. Lock it in. I'm going to test the power camera to see if I get a really slow frame rate. If I don't, that means the latest firmware update of 1.20 on the head play addresses that issue. Okay, now time for the frame rate test. Let's see. Looks okay. This is definitely faster than 5 frames per second. One, two, three. Okay, no issue with the PAL camera. Alright, here's the moment of truth. I have the video output on a standard monitor here, and you could see some kind of a double image. When the video gets into my head play goggles, I do get 3D video, and the objects will be sinking in as though they are in the box. However, with distance, the 3D effect is reduced greatly. So if you're into FPV racing where you dodge close-by objects, you'll benefit more from the 3D effect of the Blackbird.